that like now like the new wave of hockey players in the NHL oh yeah are starting to get tattooed so like has that happened since you know you're right in Anaheim and you yeah. know the Ducks are are down the road like right. have any Ducks or even guys that like maybe are playing the Ducks are in town for a day or two and like are hitting yeah. you up like yo I want to get you to you know tattoo us for sure or tattoo um, me. so funny enough so our shop is literally on the same street as Honda Center where the Ducks play we're on Catella um so it's super close uh Funny enough, not tattooed as many hockey players, but I have been tattooed by several of the Ducks players. <laughs> Come again? So, yes. <laughs> um, the first one to do it um, was uh, Matt Bolesky. So he was on the Ducks. Um, that was that all happened happened very randomly. Um, he made a bet with some friends that he would score a goal at the the Ducks LA Kings um say outdoor stadium game and if he did they would have to get his number tattooed and if he didn't he would have to like take them out to dinner or something like that so he ended up scoring like a super greasy goal <laughs> and uh, they just like my friends looked at each other and were like oh <laughs> we're getting Valeski tattoos now <laughs> so they came to me and were like hey can you do a 39 on us and I'm like yeah for sure and uh, Matt was like, oh, he's, I'm going to come with you guys. So he came. And at that time, I don't think Matty had – he might have had, like, one or two tattoos. But I know he was still kind of new to the tattoo world. Um, so he was asking me questions while I was doing it. He's like, hey, so how do you do this? Or how do you know when to blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, oh, you feel it and you run this, blah, whatever. Um, so I was like, would you want to do one? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't know, you want to do a little 39 on my on my leg somewhere? And he was like, sure. <laughs> so he's like, I don't know what to do. How do I write it? And I'm like, just write it out like you would on your stick. Just a simple 39. Uh, so he did that on a piece of paper, made a stencil, put it on my, my leg. Um, and then he tattooed it. I kind of just told him what to do. And dude, he was, he was like, it's it looks great, by the way. It, it's it's held up incredibly well <laughs> and then uh after that that kind of just became a thing between like me and some friends and then uh a couple other ducks players kind of heard about it and like they became buds as well and so i've had a couple other guys do it too <laughs> i was not expecting the story to go that way <laughs> oh oh yeah um it's funny because the second one to do it was actually uh josh manson is still on the ducks and that was cool because jo josh is a great dude uh he did the same thing just the 42 the way he writes it on a stick his is extremely clean and he even like dude after he did it he was kind of like i think i could clean this line up and i'm like damn all right <laughs> and dude it's honestly a perfect tattoo it's crazy um but that was cool because even the ducks even got in on it and uh fox sports west at the time uh came and filmed it all and it was like on Ducks Weekly after oh, the, awesome. after the game, far down. Like uh, there, it was it's it blew up. It was wild. I was not expecting that at all. But Josh is a great dude, super cool homie, and it was stoked. I was stoked to get it done. That I is just, unbelievable. I just wonder when <laughs> uh, when you were getting that thirty nine on you, like that first, mm -hmm. like when he first put put that to your leg. He's probably yeah. like, all right, so like this, and you were like, holy shit, that's inside <laughs> my whole leg. <laughs> <laughs> funny <laughs> enough the the third person to do it is uh george peros so oh, he's the third one to do it and george is george is a great friend he's an awesome dude um he was like i had fun with him because i was the closest to him at that point so um he did a little a number 16 with a mustache ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh and so I, I told I was with Hammer, my friend Hammer for mm -hmm. Violet Gentleman, sure. and uh, Hammer's like, you should you should mess with him, and I'm like, like what? He's all, you should pretend it hurts really bad. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, good call. <laughs> so he's like, all right, uh, George is like, you ready? I'm like, yeah, go for it, dude. He did the first line. I just yell out, oh shit, 
<laughs> he's like, he just laughed. He's like, ah, yeah, right. <laughs> and just kept going. <laughs> so that him. was fun. Love that. He just like called your bluff. He's like, this man is. Yeah, he's like, he's full yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that, now, those are great times. What a hell of a story. Now, when you yeah. see like dudes in the NHL, even like superstars now. Yeah. Covered in tattoos. Like, how does that make you feel as a tattoo artist that like, oh. you know, these professional athletes are now embracing mm-hmm. your craft where, you know, yeah. 15, 20 years ago, there was a whole right. different stigma about tattoos. Oh, yeah. And, Tattooing in general is just become. Uh, it sounds I guess it sounds bad, but it's not like it's just become so mainstream, like everyone has tattoos, like doctors, lawyers, like doesn't matter. It's not like the scum of the earth of the earth have tattoos now. Yeah. You know, everyone's got tattoos. It's more rare to meet someone without a tattoo these days, you know, mm-hmm. than it is not. So yeah, I, I think there's something to be said about like the way the world in general, or or I mean, let's just call it let's truncate it down and just talk about America because you know we live here. Uh, but like, yes. you know, um there's something to be said about tattoos, you know, again, yeah, like moving away from being something that was like scandalous or right or or this or that and now just kind of becoming part of the norm i I even remember um i I, probably my first job in retail i think i was working at best buy when i was like 18 Mm -hmm. or 19 and i remember even then if you had tattoos on your arms they were like oh gotta wear long sleeves or totally you know or gotta cover these things up or whatever and like like and even then i thought that was like the dumbest thing i was like like what (laughs) like what's unprofessional about about art you know but nowadays, yeah. nowadays, I mean, like a lot of, pl- I mean, like there are still, I think some, some restaurants, some like, you know, hoity toity, I guess you'd call them restaurants that are like, eh, right. yeah. but like for the most part, you know, now places are embracing the fact that people, again, you know, this is an artist using, mm-hmm. you know, using your body as a canvas. Right. So, I mean, it's, totally. it's really no different to me than someone who collects paintings and hangs them up in totally. their home. Right. Right. Yeah, There's no different. So, so now, you know, um, I, I'm I'm loving that you know more places in in retail and in in workspaces oh, yeah. are embracing the fact that there's nothing wrong with tattoos. So I, I think that's a great thing. So yeah. Um, but have you ever um you know was that something that like you ever have experienced? You know, I mean, obviously, you know, I could see covered um, you know covered in tattoos. Like, have you ever experienced yeah. you know that kind of stigma or someone kind of looking at you funny? To be honest, not since uh, I I got my first tattoo and and the person that made me feel that way was my own dad he oh, thought geez. i joined the gang <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a i got three x's on the back of my leg for straight edge and yeah. he thought i had joined the gang <laughs> i was like oh. no it's just you know uh, yeah. besides that i mean you always get maybe not so much anymore but you would always get stared at for being a little a little heavily covered you know uh tattoo wise but i've also always had before tattooing i was always in some kind of work where tattoos kind of went along with it um Mm -hmm. before tattooing i i used to have like a recording studio so i used to record bands all the time oh wow Um, so yeah so that wasn't like an issue and then Mm -hmm. i worked at chain reaction which is a venue here in anaheim sure Um, i worked there for like eight years so oh wow no no problem there you know Mm -hmm. um and then went on to working at a tattoo shop and then became a tattooer but like you said about jobs being way more flexible with tattoos um our shop is right across the street from uh disneyland and disneyland was always a no tattoo policy like you can't show your tattoos they've lifted that now so all the people that we tattoo that are workers there love coming to get tattooed now because they can show them off it's wild and i mean if disneyland's doing it like come on yeah (laughs) it's time as long as it's not an Ice Nine Kills tattoo, right? I'm pretty sure they are banned from Disney. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, it's a good call. So I, I guess, um, you know, staying on topic with the tattoos, but kind mm-hmm. of shifting it into, you know, another crossover. You know, your art has been printed on shirts and printed yeah. on jerseys. And like mm-hmm. it, it has been branched out more than just like on people's bodies so like yeah can can we talk about your connection with violent gentlemen and how you linked up with those dudes yeah for sure um funny enough when i first met them 
Uh, I met Hammer first. Um, we have and had a ton of mutual friends. Like he would go to Chain all the time, and I would go to shows where like a band he was touring with um, was playing. You know, like it, it's so wild that our worlds never crossed before this first meetup. I, I think I met him right when Violent Gentleman was. Uh, they might have had they had two shirts out or they didn't even have them out yet they were gonna have them out a friend of mine was working with brian the other half of violent gentleman and he's like hey i know you're a big ducks fan you should check this stuff out um here's like their info or whatever they're gonna have a website soon it's like oh rad this is awesome i think i might have found um their instagram page and then just talk to them through that. And then we had so many mutual friends that me and Hammer finally met in person. And that was probably around the time that I was, I don't think I had just, I don't think I had started my apprenticeship yet, but I was getting into an apprenticeship tattoo wise and just told them like, Hey, I'm a big hockey fan. Like, I love like what you guys are going to do. And the shirts they had were an enforce Anaheim shirt. And then like just a violent gentleman shirt. And I was like, I'm super into this. Whatever it is, I'm in. Like, I love it. Um, and then we just kind of kept in contact that way. And uh, throughout the years, just saw them bloom. Like, they were they were progressing so fast, and I loved it. And, like, me and Hammer got really close, and we're still super close. He's one of my best friends, without a doubt. And just, like, realizing the same – or the, the amount of friends that we have in common was like, how did we never meet? This is so wild. We're both straight-edge dudes, like, love hockey – like it, it blew my mind that I had never met. But uh, the first time I worked with them was actually when I graduated my apprenticeship. Um, they were kind enough to uh, do a shirt for me in honor of me graduating my apprenticeship. And it was awesome. I, I was super stoked. It was like an Anaheim themed one. And it, honestly lasted for so long i couldn't believe it like they were just they they have always been so supportive so awesome i love those dudes and yeah it, it's just blossomed ever since then been able to work with uh, with them for a bunch of shirts some jerseys um got to do like photo stuff for them too like yeah they're awesome love them and it's crazy that they're they're celebrating their 10 year anniversary and i i remember <sighs> when like my friend Damber first like kind of introduced me to them to yeah. see where they are now, like mm -hmm. actually working directly with like the AHL working Dude, directly unreal. with the NHL. Like they have yeah. some of their stores and like, I know the, the For Vegas sure. um, team store, I'm pretty sure the LA Kings as well. They have something yep. in there. Mm -hmm. Like it's unbelievable to see what they've done in, in just 10 years, but like, it, it's kind of cool to hear your story and how it kind of run par runs parallel, right? Because you were yeah, it's pretty kind wild. of, yeah, like, you know, finishing up your apprenticeship almost mm -hmm. at the same time, like they were starting, like, yeah. it's kind of cool to see where you have gone to and like, totally. how many shirts is it up to now? Oh, I don't even know, to be honest. Um, God, it's got to be like anywhere, maybe like 15 or something like that, maybe. I would say it's like between 10 and 15 because sometimes it will I'll just help them with something small. It's not like a full on design or something like that. But um, yeah, like luckily, I mean, it blows my mind that there's more than one. <laughs> so <laughs> that's already amazing to me, you know? Yeah. And now I'm like making the parallel because you, you mentioned like, oh, goalie's got the pads. But like, yeah, you forgot the most badass part of the goalie equipment which is the goalie mask like yeah and, and when you think about it like ed belfour and like oh. felix potfin and like some of those mm -hmm. like guys that first introduced like designing Artwork. these yeah art like yeah. epic goalie masks mm -hmm. like is that kind of like a bucket list item for you as an artist like to have yeah. an nhl goalie come and reach sure. out to you and be like yo design a helmet for me for sure 100 percent um I've, I've got to do like, uh, I've done Eddie Belfour's Eagle mask tattoo wise. And the guy that got it, I believe he's from Chicago. He, uh, he has this rad photo of him holding out his arm with the tattoo with Eddie. And like, he's just like giving the thumbs up. I'm like, Oh, that's so cool. Like, that's amazing. You know? Um, 
and I've done like a good amount of goalie mask tattoos and I love doing them. Um, I've been asked to do some actual masks, not by anyone professional yet. Would love to do that. Um, that's definitely a goal for sure. Hoping we can get there one day. Well, I I'm sure until like a couple of years ago, a goal was probably like, man, I would love to oh. design a, a jersey that's like on the ice. And then yeah. this happened. So like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was actually uh. worn by the Ontario rain. And I'm sure Tom has no idea that the Ontario rain actually play in California, but <laughs> yeah, different yeah, Ontario. yeah. He, no, that no clue. Different Ontario, <laughs> but the most <laughs> badass ahl jersey like hands down has to be like takes the prize Appreciate it. and like that seeing the vg on there too like it's just uh -huh. like all the pieces came together and it's just For so sure. epic and like you know sometimes teams come out and they have these like cool concept jerseys but they never right. actually make it onto the ice right but like yeah, yeah. they played a game in that the jersey whole game yeah, yeah. so I was, you know, I got asked through VG, like the, the, without them, like I couldn't have done it. Um, but like I said, we always work on random projects together. This being one of them that they have a really good relationship with the rain and they've got to do like, they've done like bobbleheads with them for giveaways and like um, just different themes like that. And when they came to me with this idea, I was like, dude, I would love to do this. And I assumed it was just going to be a jersey that they wear for warmups, and that's it, which is already still super cool. Like, the fact that there's even going to be a jersey, like, that to me is huge. Um, so then they told me, like, no, they're going to play in, play in them the whole game. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's gnarly. Um, <laughs> and not only that, but so I went to the game with Hammer and Brian, a violent gentleman, and – when we walk into the arena, they're giving something away as you walk in. And I just assumed it was like, I don't know, like just an Ontario rain shirt or something. The rain straight up made like um, sublimated jerseys of that design oh, to damn. give to the crowd. So if you walked in, you got a version of the jersey. Not obviously like the stitched and patched jersey, but just like a practice jersey that's like printed on. Um we didn't know they were doing that. So I was like, whoa, even seeing that, my art on that, I was like, this is this is pretty gnarly. And then as soon as we walk in, dude, people are already wearing them. I'm just like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> I was not expecting this. And then they also had a shirt made of it that they were uh, selling in the team store, which is super cool too. I couldn't believe it. And not only that, but when we got to our seats, um, started looking at the scoreboards and whatever and everything was wrapped and had that artwork on it and they oh, did like so an awesome. animated version of it they did like they killed it dude they, it was pretty unreal none of us were expecting any, any of that they went above and beyond for sure and that was super cool um watching them watching the players come out wearing them like oh that was uh that one that one got me a little bit for sure <laughs> i felt like such a proud dad i was just like recording everything like <laughs> oh that person's got oh, it yeah, like it, it was yeah it was uh it was awesome it was as you should like, thank you appreciate yeah, it yeah, of yeah. Course. it was never never in my wildest dreams that i think like you know professional team would be wearing a jersey i helped make like uh, like <laughs> that, right? was, that was not something i ever thought you know like a goal had always been like to do artwork for the ducks and i did yeah. get to do that that was amazing mm -hmm. That was a childhood dream come true. The jersey is like a step above. That was unexpected for sure. So I'm now, sure. Do you have an actual one? Yeah. Like, I was so say, I yeah. do. I ha I have one coming with my last name and my my favorite number. So love that. Uh, that blows my mind. I can't wait. Can't wait to rock that thing. 